All right. Hello and welcome to the Miracle Morning for Network Marketers audio series slash podcast, depending on where you might be finding this information and this content at the moment. My name is Pat Petrini. I'm the co-author of the number one best-selling book, The Miracle Morning for Network Marketers. And in creating this book, we reached out to some of the very top network marketers in the world and we interviewed them, some of the top performers, both people that have been around the network marketing world for years and even decades, as well as people that are uh, fairly newcomers that have just been around for the last few years but have had uh, extreme success in those just, just those last few years. And we reached out, we interviewed them. That's what this series is all about. You're going to hear interviews from a number of different people. Um, and we, in these interviews... We dive into not only their tips, strategies, techniques, things that have really accelerated their business, um, but also, uh, and of course this was uh, sort of the, the thesis, the theme of the book is the Miracle Morning for Network Marketers. We delve into their morning routines and their daily rituals, things that are, they consider to be critical for success that are really important for them to do every single day. And what we found, um, the whole concept of the Miracle Morning is that not every successful person does all of these different things every day, but just about every successful person does some of these things every day, has some of these daily rituals, oftentimes morning rituals, and so we dive into that in this, uh, in this uh, audio series. Now, if you're not familiar with the book, you can check out the book, of course, at Amazon. Just go to Amazon and search for The Miracle Morning for Network Marketers. You'll find it right there. And then, of course, you can also go to our website. You may be listening to this recording right there on our website. But if you're not, if you're finding it somewhere else, go to TMM for networkmarketers.com. That's TMM, like The Miracle Morning, for F-O-R, networkmarketers.com. Again, my name is Pat Petrini. I hope you're going to enjoy this interview. I know you're going to enjoy this interview. You might want to have a pen and paper handy. And uh, on with the show. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to our call here today. My name is Pat Petrini. And I have the great honor of being on the line with Maria Williams. Maria, are you there? I'm here. All right. Well, Maria, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you um, being on the line here with us and uh, participating in this project, the Miracle Morning for Network Marketers. Uh, I'm really excited for uh, really excited for everybody to to kind of hear all of um, hear all of your wisdom that you've got to share both in the book and on this recording. Thanks for being here. Oh, not a problem. Thank you, Pat. It is actually my honor, and I, I, don't, I honestly don't feel qualified to do this because I haven't been in network marketing that long, but I figured, you know, if I've had success, you know, others can have it, and that's what I want to share with the world is, is just help others achieve, you know, success and, and be the best they can be. Yep. Well, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons that I was excited to ask you to, to be part of this project is, is partially because you you have achieved a very very high level of success, um, certainly in the one percent of earners in the in the network marketing world, um, but also that you're you're actually you're not somebody that's been in the industry for decades and decades. You know, you're you've uh, been been in for a handful of years and done very very well. But you're you're the type of person that I wanted to feature. Um, in this in this book, and and because you just you know you're just uh, clearly the type of person that's going to continue to do very very well um, in this industry, and already are very well accomplished. So you know part of this is pulling together the right types of people, not just people that have been around for decades and decades. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Um, what I thought uh, now uh, you're you're down here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, which uh, where Emily and I are, are as well. And um, you know, I was I thought it might be worth uh, sharing with everybody how we had first come in contact because I thought it might um, illustrate a couple of things. It took me a second to remember. Do you remember how we had first met? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it actually, when I was thinking about it this morning, it actually took me a minute to to recall. Uh, you know, but um, so uh, I'll I'll let Maria maybe tell the story here, but. Um, Maria uh, had reached out to me, and um, and then you know, uh, we, and we've both kind of like you know, she was did had really really great follow up and was talking to me about her uh, company and her business, and and we kind of just developed this uh, friendship over the last several years as we've kind of touched base, and and um, she shared with me what she's been doing, and I've shared with her what she, what I've been doing, and um, so. 
yeah, if Maria, if you wouldn't mind telling, you know, how, how you had originally reached out to me and, and what I, one of the reasons I thought it was worth kind of bringing it up is just simply, I think it's such a, a perfect example of, um, of like high caliber recruiting, I guess, I guess I would say is that it really it, it's building relationships with people like really excellent recruiting is really just building relationships. And, you know, um, you reached out and it was kind of a cold call one day, but now we've kind of develop this friendship and you know we haven't worked together in the same company yet at this point at least now we're working on this project together but that's what in my opinion what re- recruiting um, should kind of be is kind of building our relationships but maybe I'd love to hear it from your perspective yeah um, absolutely I, I agree you know people always kept telling me when I first got involved this is all about building relationships and I mean I just didn't get it but because I had lots of friends and lots of relationships. And, but truly, because I, I came from corporate America. I was an HR manager for over 20-some years. So, you know, when I left work, I did not want to associate, <laughs> like, with a lot of people from work because it was just such a stressful environment. So it was my family, my home. So, you know, you built relationships at work, but not they didn't become friends and family, really. I mean, corporate America is just different, especially in the manufacturing industry. Um, you know, it's just that it's not this type of, of industry where you can build good, strong relationships. Of course, you only right. have one or two. But this, but network marketing is all about relationships. It's all about connecting with people. So, um, so for people to understand why I even was doing cold calls. I, I grew up in Massachusetts and I moved out here and I was living here for about a year when I became involved um, you know, with Life Vantage and um, I, I didn't have a warm market. I mean, I had right. very few people that I knew so I, I didn't have a warm market here in Arizona. And I didn't, you know, right. I, I did a little of recruiting back in Massachusetts, but it's difficult because I, I couldn't be flying back out there every other week to help them. Um, so I, I really was focusing on, I wanted to build a team here where I live to make it easier. Right. And so I, um, someone had sent me a video on, um, I can't believe, um, I still believe, um, it's, well, oh God, I can't remember the name of it now. I still yeah, think yeah, it's a pyramid scheme. Um, right, right. So, and that was kind of the beginning, the video we used to, you know, send people and, you know, they thought, you know, oh, this is a pyramid scheme. So I still think this is a pyramid scheme. So I, I sent them that <laughs> video, which I just, you know, it was on YouTube. and But l- way at the bottom it said, you know, contact Pat Petrini. And and I said, well, I mean, I had nothing to lose. So I was really searching for how can I expand the cold market? How, you know, how do I meet people? How do I, and so I sent you a email. I remember sending you an email yep. and um, you kind of, you know, read it and responded back, which I thought that was interesting. It's like, hey, you got to respond. So, so we kind of bantered back and forth a little and, um you know, actually talked once on the phone and then met together and then it just kind of spurred on from there. I mean, you had, you know, a great experience in network marketing, which I tapped into your videos and stuff. And, you know, I just thought you, you know, I think it comes down to I thought you were a neat person. I thought you were a great guy. And then I met Emily and I thought she was awesome. And, um, you know, we've been able to do a couple of other things together. And I think, you know, I think this business attracts like-minded people. And in that right. case, I think that's uh, that connecting factor between us. You know, a lot of things that you know um, out of life that we want and that we see, we just think a little differently, and we're and we have that like mind. So we've been able to go on a um, a service project together to Mexico, and you know, build you know continue to build that relationship. And um, so um, and it was just all about it is all about following up and. I've always said it may not have been this particular project or another project, but who knows where life i I truly believe that you meet people for a reason, yeah, um, and the fact that you even responded and then we and we did you know start to communicate and build a relationship and get to know each other um I think there's always reasons for that in life, and um I think yeah. you just keep those close relationships and see where they go where life takes you, 
Yep. Well, I just I I just thought it was a perfect example, and I've told many people about it of of just like I said, recruiting done right in that you were um, first off you made the call, which most people would never even uh, most a lot of people, uh, especially when they're getting started and kind of um, you know don't have a lot of a warm market. A lot of people just kind of don't make the call. They jump to assumptions of oh you know probably wouldn't work out or whatever. And um, and then, but then it was just a real regular follow up. Like you were you were calling me every, um, you know, probably two three months or whatever. You were touching base with me. Hey, how are things going? You were letting me know how things are going with you guys, the growth that you're experiencing, you know, all that kind of stuff. And as we were touching base, you know, it was just a real mutual respect. And and it was like uh, for me, it was just the, the the timing wasn't exactly right. But as I got to know you, I was like, this is definitely somebody that I would love to work with going forward, and now here we are yeah. working together on this project at least, and, you know, who knows what uh, in the future. But um, but no doubt it's uh, it done right. You, you build these great relationships, and you just never know how things are going to work out. So I, I thought that was just a great example. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, if it doesn't, you know, I think people take it so personally, like, oh, they're not interested in, in this. It, you know, it's all about people's individual and personal timing and where they're at right. in their life. But I think if you cultivate those relationships, and, you know, it, it, it's got to come from a place that, you know, you like the person. Something, right. you know, attracts you to the person that, you know, you want to be in touch with that person. You like the person that they are. And I think as we get to know each other, um, I think we like the people that we were and we, you know, yeah, I, I exactly. remember that it was like a friendly competition. Like how was your right. business doing? And then here's my business <laughs> doing and, and exactly. mine was growing and it was exciting. I mean, I'll never forget yeah. you were the first person I called when I hit my huge milestone in our company. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I hit the elite <laughs> ranks, I was driving home from Prescott. I had done a meeting and, um, I was driving home, and you're the first person I called, and I'm like, oh, my God, I made it. I hit it. I hit Pro 7, and I was, like, so super excited. Um, and it was just because I knew we were having that friendly competition. And, exactly. Um, you know, it was just fun. I mean, so, I mean, you were a fun person to kind of have that call with. Like, there wasn't, like, a lot of other people I could have had that conversation with. They'd be <laughs> like, oh, you're rubbing it, you know, in, you know, rubbing it in. For and sure. I'm like, and it wasn't that. It was just. A friendly, you know, um, thing, and so it was exciting. It was fun to do that. Yeah, yeah, totally agreed. Now, on, on that, kind of on that topic, you're talking about kind of personal timing. I, this is a little bit different that type of timing. But one of the questions that I had asked you um, earlier was, in terms of, uh, you know, one of the really important things when somebody is getting started in network marketing. I mean, one of the really important things right off the bat is actually picking. A good company, and because uh, 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 somebody I used to work with in the past used to say that it, it doesn't matter how hard you run, if you're uh, if you're running laps on the ship of the Titanic, it's still going down. And um, so, okay. picking a, a really good company is is a really important piece, even if you are a hard worker and great mindset, great attitude. And and I had asked you. Um, what are some of the important pieces of, of picking a, an important company? And you had listed the, the top three of, of the choices that I had given you. You'd put it as the top three was timing, products, and mentors. So I wanted to see if you could kind of touch on those things. Um, why, why timing, products, and mentors do you think are, are the three kind of most important things that, that you would look at? Well, originally, you know, I had, had – thought it was, you know, product or service, whatever your business is. But then as I've gotten more knowledgeable in this industry, um, I really feel that timing is because you could have the best service, best product in the world. I mean, someone actually told me the other, you know, as an example, someone said, you know, you, know, you, could, have, you could have the cure for cancer, right? That could be your product. But if everybody already knows about it, then so that and then timing is important, is, is, right. is, you know, the most important factor after you decide which business, you know, you're choosing, which product, service, whatever it is. So, and then I thought about that and reflected upon it, and I said, you know what, it's true, because if um, this had come across, and when, when, and when this came to me, this business that I'm in right now, yeah. um, you know, I fell in love with the product. I knew I was going to be on the product. But if the timing wasn't there... 
I would still just be a customer. I would be on the product. I would not have decided to become a distributor. So I had right. to look back and think of what made me decide to do what I'm doing. And it really, it, in, in, in doing the business side of it, it was really the timing. It was realizing right. That nobody knows about this. We're new to the market, you know, and you have, you know, your risks when you're new to the market. But it's where I believe, you know, you have the greatest potential. Also, I mean, because when right. you look at all the great companies that are out there, you know, they had a humble beginning. They, you know, there's a commercial, a Cadillac commercial that shows five of the five billion dollar, multi billion dollar companies that are out there today, and they started in garages. Yeah. So. It is about timing and when you get into that, you know, to that particular business. So it's at least knowing where you're at, I think, is yep. important because I do think that, you know, you can make, you can be successful with any company, but it, 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 it just will be more work if the timing, you know, if a lot more people know about it, and then you yeah. may have to go into different markets or different areas where they don't know about it. And, you know, when I look at this, you know, coming from the East Coast here to the West Coast, I look at there's so many things here on the West Coast that don't exist on the East Coast. And right. there's things on the East Coast that don't exist here on the West Coast. Like, so it's interesting that we're one United States, but still it's 300 million Americans, you know, thousands and thousands of miles separating us. And some things, you know, they take a while to get to the other side of which coast <laughs> right. you're on. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so... <laughs> But I, but I do think that timing plays an important factor. Um, yeah. I really, really do that it does play an important factor of being able to capitalize on more of the market share if you want it. Yeah. And now let me ask you about mentors. Uh, what, you would put that as, uh, as one of the top items too. Um, why is that so important? What role have uh, mentors played in, in your success? You know, um, mentors are everything. Ooh. When I um, was writing, you know, the survey out this morning, you know, answering yeah. the questions, I got emotional and teary, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, wow. You know, it's thinking. I'm going to say it in a teary voice, and then we can clean it up later. <laughs> but oh, it's, it's really thinking of. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's really thinking about the people that are really, really helping me. Oh. Yeah. Like, I could never have done this without Carrie Williams. I really, really couldn't. Yep. All right. I got to, I got to. All right. I really could not have done this without Carrie Williams. Yeah. You know, there's other mentors there that are great and have been around, but we started this together. And Carrie is uh, Carrie's your neighbor, so that, for, as everybody knows. And you, you guys knew each other beforehand, and then you moved down here to uh, um, because Carrie was already down here. No, no, um, I didn't know Carrie at all. I just happened oh. when I moved from from Massachusetts to Phoenix. I just happened to pick a house that was right oh, beside her. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. You just happened so to pick no, a house. I didn't know. Okay. I, no, got it. I didn't know her at all. I mean, I had been living here for about a year, so. Um, as our neighbor when she, before she brought this to me. And, you know, we had just, I mean, I probably was here six months, and I would say hi and bye, no big deal. And and then um, one day you saw her at the pool, and we really started talking, and um, she was in a different company, and she kind of shared that with me. And, you know, and we started our business relationship and our, you know, our real friendship. And um, yeah. But then when we, when we both joined this company, um, you know, and we were both new at network marketing. She was too. But it's just the type of person that she is. Yeah. Which is just, you know, um, she's just been there for me. You know, yeah. um, this, this business can be a roller coaster ride. There's ups and downs. That's why it is so much about your mindset and your you know, being positive and having, you know, that cheerleader there with you and that person to hear you when you're down and just, so she's just been that kind of person. Um, yeah. And she has just motivated me and helped me to see the big picture. Yeah. Um, helped me to see that I can do this. And we were both new at it, but we both, like, just helped keep each other motivated. And I know that if... um. 
if I was doing this alone when I started, never. I don't. I don't think I would have. Um, I think I would have given up. Yeah. Um, because I know along the way, many times I wanted to give up. Yeah. But I kept. She kept pushing me and say like, so what are we going to do different? You know. So if you don't do this, what else is there? You know. What are you going to go back to? What do you? You know. And just that type of always kind of pushing me, challenging me, and pushing me. Right. To think and say, you know, yeah, this is our way out. This is our way to find our financial freedom and the freedom that we want in our life. And yeah. It really was just her being there with me um, that I know is what kept me in this game. Yeah, really having kind of an accountability partner with her. Absolutely, yeah. It was daily. I mean, we talked every day, even if we were off doing our own thing, um, by the end of the night we'd call and kind of recap. You know, we didn't call it an accountability partner. We just sure. called it two, you just, you just did two it. friends, you know, yeah, pushing each other and just, you know, staying in the game and keeping our our head, you know, positive and, and uh, staying focused and um, just pushing hard and helping each other to get to where we wanted to get to and Right. Um, like, you know, like we didn't know where this was going to go and that we were going to have this, you know, um, huge success. Um, and But that's the kind of person that I want to be from my team and for the people that I bring on board. And I think that's what you have to be in this business is it's not about you once you get involved, once you become that distributor. It's all about, I mean, once you get a distributor, it's all about that person. Yeah that you bring in, and it's about you helping them, because once you know their why and their goals and their dreams, all you want to do is help them get there and help them have that success and have the success that you've had. I mean, to me personally, this is all about trying to help others now have what I have been able to accomplish and, right. um, Absolutely. and help them get there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I... I love uh, I, I love you know getting to know both of you because you two are kind of like a dynamic duo in the way that you work together and uh, you can tell easily that it obviously is a very very uh, strong bond between you two and and I can only imagine how, you know um, how much you know ha- having the two of you and uh, you know working together like that daily just keeping each other accountable and challenging each other and you know that that's a that's a huge thing to have somebody that's on board with you like that. Absolutely, it is. I mean, it is key, especially, you know, at the beginning. And if you've never done this, it's finding just that partner. I mean, so many people think we're, like, truly business partners because we were always together and we've built this together. And, you know, we're not. We have a separate spots in the business. But we've treated each other like we were partners. Right. Um, and I think that's what's key is, is really um, – you know, finding that person that you can help and truly just helping them in every way possible because when they start to have their success, you know, like now we don't spend as much time as we did together building the business because, we're, you know, we're all off building our own you sure. know, our different organizations, um, but we're still neighbors and we still talk and we, and, well, not every day, but almost at least every day we text about something yeah, that's going sure. on. I mean, so we still have that, you know, strong connection, but... At the beginning when everything is so new and, you know, you're learning and it's like, can I do this and trying to build your belief and, you know, the struggles that you have is having that person that just knowing that they're having the same struggles and that they're going through what you have gone through. So I, I, always, I always teach people um, to remember where you came from in this business because yeah. it is a tough business and trying to show people that, you know, and what you're going through, we went through it. There's nothing that you're going to tell me that you've gone through, all the no's that you get that, you know, we haven't got those. We have gotten those no's, the same exact, but we just kept pushing through them and looking for the yeses, um, you know, and looking for the right people and to build your business and the people that, you know, saw this the way we saw this. And right. So it's important to have someone like that that you can work closely with that is there for you. Um, yeah, and and I think it was neat us going through it at the same time, um, in in learning and growing and developing, you know, our skill set, you know, to yeah. have the success that we have today and and the huge organizations that we can help. Yeah, well, I know that I, I definitely um, 
I, I know that if I look back at the, the different successes that um, what I would consider to be success that, that I've had in, in my life, every single one of them, I can very clearly point to somebody that was uh, was like my mentor in that and and for without without a doubt um a massive uh portion of why I had success in that area came from the fact that I had that person there to lean on to help hold me accountable for me to bounce ideas off of all that kind of stuff so i, I personally i see that as like a i, I see that as like a an ingredient that you just can't be without. Like I, 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 for me, when I'm do, going into something moving forward, I feel like you've just got to have that person that uh, that you're going to be kind of leaning on as as that mentor role. Um, you know, however you find that person. So. Yeah, absolutely, and that's why I actually, you know, when I did the ratings, you know, one through eight, that you of the different criteria, compensation yeah. was after that, and I looked. Yeah, so I, I agree. Kept looking you at it, and I'm like, wow. You know, shouldn't compensation have been the first thing? And it's like, no, because, right. you know, if all, you know, I, I really think it's those three factors first, the timing, the product, and the mentors, the people, you know, you're going to be work, locking arms with and, and building this with because the yeah. rest of it will all fall in place and the rest of it can be fixed or you can tweak it or you can work on it. And, um, yeah, the compensation plan is important, but, you know, it could have been the best paying one, but if I couldn't get, you know, get going if I couldn't, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I agree with you 100%. Know. I would much rather have a, a great mentor and a mediocre compensation plan than no mentor and the best compensation plan on earth. I I agree with you 100% on that. Yeah, and I think that's where, you know, some people might make mistakes, you know, is not realizing um, the really key things that are important and, and having those mentors is a huge, huge part of it. Yeah. And, um, but I think when, you, you know, that's why I really think this book will help a lot of people in network marketing to really understand it, why it is a relationship, you know, business. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And it's not only the relationships that you go out and you form the new ones, but it's the ones, it's those mentors, it's those, you know, um, you know, I, the people in my business now, I mean, they will be my friends for life. Right. Um, no oh, matter yeah. what Absolutely. happens because, you know, it's just you've built those deep relationships with them and the type of person they are and you want to be like and you want to, um, you know, emulate the characteristics that they have and be like them yep. and vice yep. versa, the things that we do that they want, you know, to be like. And yeah. I think you learn from everyone, you know, from mentor, from, you know, people who you think – I'm mentoring you, but you're also teaching at the same time. We all have something to give and teach. Um, right. So it's a two-way street. There's not you don't learn one way. It's always a two-way right. street. Right. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Well, and and sort of on that topic, um, you know, we've talked about kind of who do you, looking for sort of a mentor, looking for you know somebody you can kind of latch onto and run with. Um, on, on sort of the opposite side is when when you are. Uh, you, okay, somebody's joined and now they're um, uh, they're got to start kind of building their team. What what is it that you kind of look for in uh, in somebody that you actually want to you know recruit? What are the, the traits that you're kind of looking for? Somebody that you would actually want to kind of bring onto your team? You know, it's 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 leadership. It really is about leadership. It's someone that has been a leader in something in successful and something in just any type of business doesn't have to be this business but just someone that has leadership skills has been successful um, because I think people that bring the leadership skills um, can learn everything else is easy I think yeah. the leadership skills is the toughest and I think that's what probably holds a lot of people back from achieving their greatness because they're not sure how to be that leader. Um, they haven't had those roles in life. Um, and so if, if I could pick and choose the people, it would be people that you know had great leadership skills because that's what ends up happening in this business is you lead a group. Um, yeah. So no one, so in network marketing, no one, you're not anyone's boss. <laughs> yep. So you can't, you know, they can't clock in and clock out. Or, you know, it's not like corporate America. It's all about yeah, leading them, motivating them. It's a volunteer, volunteer them. army. 
it's it's a volunteer army. There you go. Um, it's inspiring them. It's you know coaching them. It's a it, that takes you know that takes having those leadership skills to be able to have the patience and the knowledge and how to develop people to be their best. Um, and as and and on on the other side of the people that are accepting this, they have to be open minded. You know, they have to be open to um, receive, you know, what you're trying to teach them. So I think if you bring someone with leadership skills and they're open to learning the other stuff that they don't know, so they have to have the two in combination, the leadership skills and being open-minded to, you know, learn new things and new ways of, of building this business. And then I think yeah. you can find a real successful person. Yeah. And so um, in finding those people, uh, now uh, you – I know that uh, – so we originally got in contact through kind of a cold call that you had made. Um, do, you, do you – some people are kind of like um, – that. you know, they're sort of all warm market, and they, they're really uh, strong about just teaching warm market. And some people kind of talk about doing a mix, and some people actually kind of focus more on cold market recruiting. Like, what, what do you encourage people to do? Where do you spend most of your time as far as uh, prospecting goes? Warm market, cold market, what do you do? You know, I definitely start with the warm market. Um, mm-hmm. in, it depends on the – well, I think everyone should start with the warm market. And it depends on your circle of influence. If you have a strong circle of influence, then you're going to be more successful in your warm market. Yeah. Um, if you don't, then your warm market is not going to look up to you as someone, you know, maybe really listens. So you're going to have to use a lot of third-party validation and I'm not, not saying anything bad about the person, but if um, – so I, I definitely think you – you know, everyone should start with their warm market. Yeah. And then, um, and then it's just a mix of it, you know. It's a mix of um, reaching out in the cold market and, and making connections with people. And, I mean, like I had said at the beginning, um, I didn't have a warm market at all here in Phoenix. So I had to develop that warm market. So I think you what you do with the cold market sometimes is just let it become your warm market. Yeah. Um and you know and just you know build that relationship sometimes with people and then you know maybe delve in to more what you have. So maybe you might just start a little bit with in case you know more focusing on maybe sharing your product and service and building that relationship and then being able to show them you know the business side of it, the potential, you know once they um, you know, you you have that connection with them, and they really see what this could potentially be. Right. Um, so I think it's you got to do a li- you got to do whatever it takes. Honestly, it's warm, yeah. cold, whatever <laughs> that's it right. takes. Because <laughs> hey, if I look answer. at which one should yeah, I do? If do whichever one is going to get you there. <laughs> exactly. If one's not working, switch to the other one. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I am. You know, because when you look at my my business, you know, um, the, my top three, you know, just, you know, leaders or distributors in my business, I mean, they were all cold market, but, yeah. you know, but people that I, you know, one was a really cold market and then one was someone that I met at the gym, which didn't know was a cold market, but became my warm market. So that's what I mean by, you know, go to the gym, go join a club, join, do something that you like to do that you're going to find other people that like to do that. And then as you get to know them, you know, you can, you know, start, you know, telling them what, you know, what you have your hands on, you know, your business opportunity that you have. Yeah. Um, you know, as you get to know them. Yep. Um, you know, a quick, quick question uh, is before we jump to talk, topics here is um, I, I always think this is, I, I always enjoy asking this question just because, it, uh, it the pattern is so similar. Everybody that would I, I ask this of top earners throughout the industry doesn't matter the company doesn't matter you know how how long they've been building their business. The pattern is always the same. So uh, so my two questions are and I just think it's a good illustration for people listening. My two questions are one is how many people approximately you know give or take a few have you do you think that you've personally sponsored uh, into your business. 26 distributors. 26 distributors. Now, out of 26 distributors, um, how many have actually sort of gone on to build your organization? How many, um, uh, sort of 90% of your organization is underneath how many of those 26? Three. 
Three. Yep. <laughs> it's always how it is. It, the, the answer, uh, it, it, it's so interesting to me because the, the answer to question one, how many of you sponsor, is almost always, um, you know, between 20 and 50, I would say, is kind of what, where, where it usually ranges. Um, yep. Sometimes if somebody does a lot of cold market stuff, then they might be, you know, way up there, like 100 or 200 or stuff like that. But usually it's kind of in, in like the 20 to 50 range. And then the answer of how many people have actually gone on to build it is always between three and six. It's always three yeah. to six of those. Uh, and, and, um, and so I think that that's, it, it actually makes it, I think the, the reason I like bringing that up is because when you look at those numbers, it, it shows people it's very doable. The, the whole game here is finding those three to six people. That's the whole deal. And so you might have to sort short through 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 to find the three, four, five, or six. But that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for a handful of key people that are really going to go and do this with us. Absolutely. And I think another good question to ask is how many people do they think they talk to? Because oh, that's yeah. what I... Mm -hmm. What I yeah, what I always ask people is is I want to know how many of you talked to, and it, it usually it's around the same thing to find those, you know, the the first you know twenty you know twenty four twenty six the first two dozen that they find they bring in, it's usually an average of two to three hundred that they've gone through to find the, you know, the, sure. like that's what I did. I probably talked to two to three hundred people to find the twenty six, sure, and the three uh, that come that, that have come out of that that have built my organization to the size that it is today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And some people might be like, well, gosh, two, two to three hundred people sounds like a lot. And, and it's like, well, I mean, maybe it is, but I guess it's like, what is, you know, how important is financial independence to you? You know, it's like, what are you willing to do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I had put on one of your responses, you know, that we, one of the questions was, you know, it's so sad how people give up so quickly without, you know, if you, like if you truly think like, okay, I want financial freedom, I want to be a millionaire, right? Do you right. really think in three months it's not working, you give up? Did you really want to have that financial freedom? Do you really think people who have built multi-million dollar organizations that it just was handed to them, any type of right. business? No. I mean, it takes hard work. So I always, yeah. you know, teach people it's a three to five year plan because if, you can either go through those two to three hundred really quick, you know, and, and shorten that three to five year plan, but most people don't. So it's a three to five year plan to right. get through two to three hundred people, find those three or you know three to six that are going to take you know take your business to the you know and you know, build a huge organization for you. Right. Absolutely. Now, um, kind of jumping topics a little bit. I wanted to uh, on the topic of the miracle morning and. Um, uh, that, uh, that of course is kind of the central theme of, of the book is um, I wanted to focus a little bit on you know I, definitely what we found and of course what, what we uh, are sort of highlighting in the book is how it just almost universally you talk to people that are at the top of their game um, they they all there's certain sort of daily routines that they've implemented that that are, are a lot of times there are things that other people um, maybe people that aren't having as much success. We all kind of know that they're important, but a lot of some people implement them, some people don't. So I wanted to ask you about, you know, some of these daily routines that, that maybe you've implemented that have had made a, a big impact in your life, in your uh, professional career, in your personal life. Um, what what are some of those daily routines that you actually kind of do pretty regularly? You know, it's funny when um, when I saw you know that question, um, I didn't realize I had a daily routine. <laughs> yeah, uh <-huh. laughs> I I was like, okay, I don't do anything special. I get up and I you know, <laughs> and then I started thinking, but wait a minute, what do I do? And you know, and I think the first thing when I wake up in the morning, even before I kind of open my eyes, I just really thank God for another wonderful day. I really yeah. do. I I kind of take a few minutes before opening my eyes and really moving. It's just when you're like in that state of awakeness and just, you know, just being grateful for being alive the next day and just really, really being grateful and thankful for everything that's been given to you that you have and, you know, being grateful for the day ahead and really just set 
an intention in my mind that, you know, today is going to be a great day, that you're going to help someone or whatever you have planned for that day, just kind of rolling through it in my head. You know, these are the, you know, a couple of things that I really want to accomplish today. Um, and so it's, it's, it's part of it is being grateful and then part of it is just sending, setting, sending, setting the right mindset for the day like this is going to be a wonderful day. This is going to be a great day. It's going to be a day full of adventures, full of gifts and opportunities. Yeah. And really just kind of getting your, you know, you getting your head in the right place when even before you start your day and not getting up already in a bad mood, right? Let's get up in a good mood with a positive, you know, wonderful attitude. So that's probably the first thing I always do is that. And then, you know, then it's the morning running around with kids and family, and it's my family time where, you know, I, I, I don't look at the phone. I don't look at emails. I just have that time in the morning where everyone is kind of getting ready for the day and getting them all off and, and going. Um, and then I probably take a quick look to see if there's anything really important, and if not, then definitely go work out or do something um, you know, move your body. I really believe it's important. I do a little quick yoga in the morning, stretching, um, and then I and then once kind of all that's done, is I look at my agenda. I am really big and on setting. So the day before, or the weeks before, already setting what am I going to do today. So I already have a plan of yeah. action. I don't get up today and say, oh, what am I going to do today? So you know, today even this morning, I had a plan of action. I had a list of you know, 30, you know, East Coast cold markets, cold <laughs> cold calls that I was going to do to help my sister build her business out there. And yeah. um, so I had I had my agenda for the day. I think that's real important to have that agenda and, you know, stick to it as much as possible um, because, of course, things happen during the day and you have to change. But know what, what are you going to do today? What is your plan? If, if you're not in the phase of recruiting, then... You know, which distributors are you going to call? Who are your four or five people you're working with that you're going to call and you're going to see how things are going for them? You know, right. So it's just have that set agenda for the day. I think if you have you know, your life scheduled out, and I schedule my family life out too and, 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 and work my business around that, so then you have a plan um, of what is is going, you know, what what you're going to do today, and then right. with that you expand it, you know, for daily to weekly to monthly to, you know, yearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I was just that's funny. I'm glad you talked about that because that was literally going to be my next question. Now, do you uh, do you sort of plan it the day before, or do you sort of plan out your whole week, or or what do you actually do? I like, do you just do um, like on Sunday, kind of actually like lay out tasks for the day, or do you kind of like do it the night before? You figure, okay, these are the things I want to accomplish tomorrow, or how do you actually do it? Well, I, you know, I use a, just a simple calendar, and it's always filling up. So, you know, yeah. filling up with appointments. So it's kind of naturally starts to fill up, and then I, I weave in, you know, the daily, you know, the the family stuff that has to happen in there also. Um, but the night before, I always kind of look at what's my day for tomorrow? What do I have planned on there? And if it's not really full, then I, I will try to fill it up more with, okay, who, you know, who should I reach out to that I haven't talked to you know, last week? And maybe you know, take three distributors that I'm just going to reach out to and, and call. Um, so right. I do, it, it's, it's like a live, you know, it's a living, breathing document, so it is filling up, but I do look at it every night before I go to bed, I just kind of look. So I know what my day is going to look like. So I'm kind of, you know, at night I kind of do the opposite of what I've done in the morning. Well, I kind of do the same what I've done in the morning. But, you know, going to bed at night, just being really, really grateful for, you know, what I have for the day that I've had. And, you know, since I've looked at I know what's coming tomorrow is just, you know, that those intentions again of having a great day tomorrow. I've got this one-on-one -on -one this, you know, this distributor is really excited about this person they're going to introduce me to and just, you know, um, just kind of a prayer out for the day that's coming that it will be a, a blessed day. Right. Yep. I love it. Well, um, just a last, last kind of question here, and then, of course, any, any closing thoughts or anything that we didn't touch on that, that you want to share, I'd love to, um, to touch on any of that as well. But um, just, you know, any, any thoughts that you have, I just wanted to ask you, you know, for for somebody that is um, 
that is maybe relatively new to network marketing that's running into some different uh, uh, challenges, you know, uh, running into some, some obstacles that they're maybe having trouble overcoming or they're actually sort of uh, kind of losing, you know, beliefs in themselves or that sort of thing. Is, um, do you have any, any advice on sort of – I know that, you know, we've talked about don't give up and you've got to kind of plow through, but, I mean, do you have any things that you do – um, to to actually get you through those tough times uh, specifically, to, to be able to keep going, to keep focused, you know, to stay driven, um, anything like that specifically that you do that really helped or has helped you in the past? Well, you know, I think it goes back to having those mentors, you know. Yeah. Um, have people that you can call because, you know, it, it is the roller coaster ride. It is, you know, it's easy business to do, but it's just a tough business. Um, yeah. It's tough mentally. So, I mean, I do a lot of things. I, I You know, it, it's just not one thing. I mean, you have to stay positive. You have to really, really believe in what you have and what you want, and you just have to stay positive. And you have to take the, every day, take the baby steps towards where you want to go. You know, they don't have to be huge steps at times if that's too much, but just Everything you do, when you want something really badly out of life, just everything you do has to be focused in that direction. So yeah. whatever comes into your life, like stop and think, is this getting me closer to my goal? Is this getting me closer? So it's going to be a yes or a no. If it's a yes, then great, go for it. If it's a no, then don't let the distractions occur of what you want. Um, so definitely the mentors help different, you know, uh, the different people to call out to and say, oh, today's a rough day. I've had, you know, like <laughs> five no's. Yeah. Um, you know, just venting to someone else that will hear you and knowing that, you know, they'll tell you a story about, you know, how that happened to them and then they made a call and it, you know, someone that amazed them and, you know, that, you know, was, was huge, um, yeah. you know, a benefit for their, you know, for their life. Um, right. And, and I constantly um, have, and I've done this for years and years and years, even before I got into network marketing. It was funny realizing, I think I've built my life to be a network marketer, but I didn't realize that's what I was doing. Yeah. When I was in my 20s, I mean, I listened to motivational CD, I mean, at the time it was tapes, but CDs all yeah. the time. I had a 45-minute drive to work. And on the way up, I would always listen to motivational stuff. Um, I would have them in my office, and I would encourage other people to listen. To them. So, I've Who always. Who are a couple listened. of your favorites? Well, way back, way back then, it was you know David Dyer was one that I really, really loved. I mean, I loved uh-huh. the stuff that he you know, talked about. And I mean, today, fast forward, um, I wish I had known uh, of Jim Rome back then because I think I would have been a, a groupie and followed him. I mean, oh my I gosh, yeah, I love Jim Rohn. <laughs> yeah, I love listening to his to his stuff now that was from years ago. And I mean, it was just he was way ahead of his time. And it's so yeah. funny how you know that what he said years and years ago still applies today into everything we yeah. do. And, you know, and of course reading, you know, all the positive motivational books that are out there, um, you know, some of my favorites are Think and Grow Rich. Um, the Compound Effect is, is huge. Mm, I yeah. love that book. It's just about the baby steps and keep, you know, there is a compound effect and you keep taking the right actions, it's going to lead to good results. I mean, you, yeah. you know, we have to keep taking those actions. Um and, 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 and any other books and stuff about um, just achieving your greatness because I've read like two, three different ones and I do believe that we self-sabotage ourselves or we listen to that little negative voice. You think of it as that little negative voice in your head that's telling you you're not going to be able to accomplish this, you're not going to be able to do sure. this. And you've got to tune that off and you've got to turn on the positive one and, and the one that tells you why you can do it and what you need to do to, to, to do it and be successful. Right. So I think those are the key things to, you know, that, that have to be done. Well, Maria, uh, like I said, I sure do appreciate you uh, spending, you know, the last, like, about an hour that we've been here, um, you know, sharing all, all, the, all your information with everybody. Are there any, any key points? That, uh, that I had, hadn't asked you about that you wanted to hit on? Anything that you particularly wanted to share that I didn't ask you about yet? Um, no, I think, you know, you pretty much covered um, all the 
key questions that we had talked about, and um, I just I just hope that this helps people, you know, achieve you know greatness and achieve what they want out of life because this industry is phenomenal. Um, and once you um, participate in it, um, you want to be part of it, um, yep. and you want to you know. There's just so many rewards in helping others achieve you know what they want out of life and. You know, one of my mentors always says, um, "You help enough people achieve what they want, then you'll get what you want." And it's yeah, so true. And absolutely. It's just keep helping people, and you will, um, you know, achieve what you want. And um, it is, you know, I, it's funny because I tell people, if you don't like people and you don't like helping people, this is not a business for you because it really <laughs> right. isn't a, a business about helping others. And um, you know the the most satisfying part of this business is when you see the people in your on your team, you know, cross the stage, achieve you know the goals and um, that they want. And I mean, when they achieve those, it's it's pretty phenomenal. And knowing yeah. that you had a little part in it, um, yeah. what they've you know been able to accomplish. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that I think that a lot of people are going to benefit from all the information that you shared. So I really appreciate you again be, taking the time to to be part of this project with us and be here on this call and excited to, uh, to work with you in the future in whatever, uh, whatever ways we end up working together moving forward here. Yeah, thank you, Pat. I appreciate it too. Like I said, it's been an honor to help you with this. All right, well, thanks, Maria. And thanks to everybody that um, has, uh, has tuned in, and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Hey, this is Pat Petrini again, and just to wrap up really quickly, I just want to remind you that if you liked this interview, we've got a whole bunch more. If you go to our website, it's tmm4networkmarketers.com. That's tmm, like the miracle morning, for, F-O-R, networkmarketers.com. And, of course, if you haven't checked out the book yet, you can go to, uh, well, first off, you get two free chapters of the book at tmm for networkmarketers.com. And then, of course, if you want to get the book, go to Amazon and just search for The Miracle Morning for networkmarketers.com, and you can get it paperback, Kindle, whatever. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you really enjoy the rest of the content that we've made available for you. Thanks a lot. Again, my name is Pat Petrini, and I'll see you on the next interview.